today we're going to be learning how to simplify radical expressions. So when we're working with radical expressions, we're talking about things with some sort of nth root in it. And we're just trying to get it into its smallest form. So we're going to use a lot of rules that we already know. Um, so we'll start out easy with something with a square root. So we should already know actually how to simplify something like this first example. So let's say we are attempting to simplify the square root of 32 x to the eighth. We want to remember what we did last week when it came to simplifying roots. Remember, you can think of each part of what's under the root as its own individual component. So we're trying to simplify the square root of 32 and the square root of x to the eighth. So we can take it in its parts rather than trying to simplify it all at once, at least until we start to get more comfortable with it. Now the square root of x to the eighth, remember from last week, that's the same thing as x to the eighth raised to the one half power, which would be x to the fourth. We can also hopefully start to skip this step here by just remembering that we can do eight divided by whatever the root is, which in this case, it's a two. So that's where we're getting x to the fourth from. Now, when we simplify root 32, we need to think back to when we practice simplifying roots in the quadratics chapter, I believe. So when things are not perfect square roots, which in this case, 32 is not, you need to break it into its components where one thing is a perfect square and the other one, it doesn't need to be. So like, for example, I know that 16 times two is 32 and the square root of 16 is a perfect square. The square root of 16 is four, but the root two does not simplify any further. So we still just have root two. So our components are the four, the root two, and the x to the fourth. Whenever you write your final answer, you should have anything outside of a square root written first. So we would have the four x to the fourth, and then anything under the square root should be written together. So we would have root x two under the square root. So this is it in its simplest form. If you were ever unsure of if you actually simplified correctly, you could go back up to the original problem and pick a number to sub in for the variable x and then check it up here and get a number and then plug in the same number for x and check it down here and you should get the same thing. Now I won't tell you if you have it perfectly simplified, but at least we'll let you know that you didn't make any major mistakes along the way. We're gonna go ahead and do a couple more examples of just simplifying these roots. Okay, so now let's make it a little bit harder where now we're gonna have a different root. So we're gonna have a fourth root. We're gonna have the fourth root of 16, eight of the 24th, b to the 13th. Now just like before, we can split this up into all of its individual components and at some point hopefully you don't need to necessarily write this down. You can just kind of work your way down the line to make sure you don't miss any. But until we get more comfortable, we can just think of it as completely separate components. Now the fourth root of 16, that actually does work out evenly. Like if you type in your calculator under the special math where you can type a fourth root, the fourth root of 16 is two because two times two times two times two is 16. That's where we're getting that from. If we were simplifying two, uh, sorry, the fourth root of eight to the 24th, that's like doing 24 divided by four. So remember it's divided by the number that's out front in the root. So that would give us eight to the sixth. And then lastly, we're running into a little bit of trouble in this last one because four does not evenly go into 13. So if we're worried about doing divided by four, it doesn't quite work out. We can think of this in a couple different ways. You can actually think about what's the closest number below 13 that four actually would go into which is 12. So we can kind of change this problem to look like b to the 12th, and then we would need one extra b to get us the 13. Or 
What you can think of also is actually do the math either in your head. We should be able to do it in your head, but you can also use your calculator and think about what 13 divided by four is, but then use remainders. So if you think all the way back to middle school and elementary school, if we're doing 13 divided by four, that can go into it three times, but then we would have a remainder of one. So what that means is we can take a B cubed out but there's one b that has to remain under the square root and can't be simplified any further so for this one your final answer would be 2 a to the 6 b cubed root b this one if you wanted to check it you would have to pick a number to sub in for a and b and then check it in the original versus now if you check the answer see if it gives you the same exact thing so again, to recap that, break it into its components. If it simplifies evenly, simplify it. But if it doesn't, like in the B to the 13th, when you're taking the fourth root, get it as close as possible. And whatever your remainder is would be left under the root. And we're gonna do just one more like this. We'll see if we can fit it on the same screen. Okay, the last one that we're going to do is going to stay in this realm of simplifying, just making sure we're getting a little bit more comfortable. So this could be a good one where you pause it and see if you're getting the hang of it. So we're going to do the, back to square root of 12, c to the 6, d cubed. So now go ahead and pause it and see if you can simplify that on your own. And then when you think you have the answer, unpause and see if you did it correctly. So hopefully when you are solving this one, the root 12 does not work out evenly. Root 12 is not a perfect uh, root square root. So you would have to break that into root 4 times root 3. And then square root of 4 is 2. The root 3 doesn't simplify anymore. The c to the 6, when we take the square root of that part of it, hopefully you remembered that this is one of those cases where we have an even number outside the root, an even number inside the root, and when we divide those, we would get an odd exponent because we would get c to the third. So because of that, don't forget that this should have an absolute value bar around it. Um, just like last week, if you have any time where you have that specific rule, you would still want to have the absolute value. And then this one where we're taking the square root of d cubed is kind of like that last one where that could go into it once. Two can get divided into three once, but we would still have a d under the square root. Okay, so then if we were writing our final answer for that one, uh, we would want to write everything outside the square root, which would be the two, the absolute value of c cubed and that one d, and then under the square root would be the three and a d would be left with that. Okay, so that's the gist of just simplifying roots. So you'll only have a few questions on your homework that are like that. Honestly, most of them involve other operations, but these rules stand for every operation we do this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and we're gonna get into the other operations that you should know how to do by the end of today. So the next thing that we want to do is learn how to multiply radicals together. So this is being able to take something with a root and multiply it by something else with a root. This is actually not too hard of a process. Uh, there is one key thing that has to be true though. Your roots have to be the same in the problem. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna say be the same N so like when we talk about nth roots, you can't multiply, for example, a square root times a cube root, but you could multiply a cube root with a cube root or a square root with a square root or a six root with a six root. You have to have the same n value in order to multiply. And then from there, your process is gonna be to multiply everything outside the root.
And then we will multiply everything inside the root. And then using the rules that we just practiced on those first three examples, then you are going to simplify from there. So make sure like if it's something under the square root that you can take something out of that you actually do that. Uh, so we're going to practice just a couple examples. Actually, I think I only have one example of this because it should follow all of the rules from before. So in this example, we're going to multiply five cube root negative 12 a b to the fourth times three cube root 18 a squared b squared Okay, so if we're looking at this one, it looks really complicated at first, but with these problems, you just want to make sure you stay organized and you pair up things that match. So we can solve this problem because we have a cube root with a cube root. So we want to then multiply everything outside the roots. So that would be the five times the three, which would be 15. And then we're going to multiply everything under the cube root in this case. So first we would start with the negative 12 times the 18. So you can multiply the coefficients together. Negative 12 times 18 would be negative 216. Remember, it's okay to have negatives under cube roots. It's only when it's under even roots that then you would get into the imaginary realm of things. We can multiply this a times this a squared. Thinking back to your exponent rules, a times a squared, we would add the exponents to give you a cubed. And same thing with b, we would add these exponents of 4 and 2, so we would get b to the 6. And then from here, we would want to simplify it just like we did in the first three problems. So whatever is outside of the root can just kind of hang out there for right now. We want to worry about simplifying what's under the square root. So if we do the cube root of negative 216, that actually works out evenly, that uh, the, the cube root of negative 216 is negative 6. And now it's no longer under the cube root because you actually solved that. The cubed root of a cubed is just a. And the cubed root of b to the 6 would have to be b squared. Remember, on both of those, I'm just doing b divided by what the root number is, or sorry, the exponent divided by what the root number is for both. Um, and then this is our answer, but you would want to go a little bit further and actually multiply that 15 times negative 6. So your final answer for this one simplifying would be negative 90 a b squared. So on all of those problems where you are multiplying, make sure they're the same roots and then you actually know you can do the problem. Then you should multiply what's outside the root, multiply what's inside the root, and then simplify whatever is in your root. Okay. We have one last type of operation we want to be able to do today, and that's going to be adding and subtracting roots. The way adding and subtracting roots goes is that whatever is under the root has to be the same. They're almost like like terms in this way. So for example, you could not add the root two plus root three. You could add root two plus root two or root three plus root three. Um, so you need like your roots to be exactly identical in these problems in order to actually combine them. So for example, we're gonna start with root 98 minus 2 root 32. Right now looking at them, 98 is not the same number as 32, so we can't just go ahead and start combining them. 
Instead for this one, we would have to start by simplifying what's under the roots until we get something that matches. So root 98, actually root 49 times root two would give you that. And then root 49 is seven. So that simplifies the seven root two. This one, I know that 32 is root 16 times root two. So just using your simplifying rules, um, but we still have that minus two outside. Um, so then this would become a four. And then negative two times four is negative eight root two. Okay, now you can see that we have the root two right here and the root two right here. So we can actually go ahead and combine them now. So when you're combining them, you want to just do whatever is outside the problem normally. So like seven minus eight is negative one, and you want to keep whatever the root is. Um, so in this case, we had root two. So our answer for this one would be negative one times root two. And this one is actually really easy to check in your calculator because you could just type the original problem this into your calculator. It's gonna give you a really nasty looking decimal, but then you can type your answer into your calculator and it should give you the same nasty looking decimal. We're gonna do just one last one like that. And then when you're done, you're gonna go onto the Google Classroom post and fill out the Google form that goes along with this. It's gonna give you two extra problems to practice completely on your own. And then the code word, which for today, the code word is pineapple. So you'll just type that in and then answering those three questions will get you credit for watching today's video. So your last practice problem is gonna be five root 12 plus two root 27 minus square root of 128. So looking at this one, now they're making it harder by adding in a third problem. Right now there's nothing that we can start combining because root 12, root 27, and root 128, none of those match. So we want to start by simplifying. Same thing we've been doing. Split it up into something that you know is a perfect square and what you would have to multiply by. So 4 times 3 is 12. 4 is a perfect square, which is 2. And you can take it in as many steps as you need to until you start to become comfortable with it. On this next one, root 27 can break up to root nine times root three, which then would be three root three, which would be six root three. Minus root 128, 128 is kind of a tricky one. That one can be broken up into root 64 times root two. And if you forgot this process of like splitting up your roots, I would just Google uh, or like go on YouTube and just look up simplifying square roots and just watch a refresher video on that. And so this last one is gonna be minus eight root two. Okay, now we're ready to put it all together. So order of operations, we would just start left to right, which we can combine these because it's a root three and a root three. So we would just add what the coefficients are. So 10 plus six is 16. We keep the root. And in this case, we cannot simplify any further than this because the root three is not the same as the root two. So we can't actually subtract those. Whatever's under the square root has to be exactly the same number in order to combine it any further. Okay, at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and fill out that Google form that I talked about on, on Classroom, and then you can email me if you have any questions on the lesson.